I remember having my first carryover in uni. Well, you heard me right when I said first because I went on to have other carivers. For those who don't know what carivers means, carivers means failing a course in the university or college as some call it. Don't worry, I'm no dummy. I still graduated with a second class upper grade, what master students would call merits. My academic pedigree is conversation for another day, but I brought it up to tell you this story. We're going out. We're going out. Apparently here, a lot of persons are night crawlers, like life begins at night. So, this is past nine, and this is when we're going out. This is like 9.27, this is when we're going out. Outfit check, one, two. Um, I don't know if I'm well dressed, but I couldn't care less. I'm not in the mood to, for shall I? <laughs> Whatever that means. So, we'll see you guys where we're going to. So guys, this is what I look like now. I have to do like a change of outfits. So, I'm taking the stairs. I don't want to take the elevator because a girl has to be fit. <laughs> Even if it means climbing just a couple of staircases a day, you get it. So, we're going to a restaurant and enjoy ourselves. Hi, Pamba. Now back to my Carriver story. So I waited four years before I got admitted to study law. I'm sure if you are not new to this channel, you've probably heard me say that before. So it was a really, really chaotic moment for me. And um, yeah, it was it was like, <laughs> I, would, I would describe it as an outlam experience for me because it was in that process that I sought God and found God and I'm really grateful for the experience for that period for having to wait. I'm I'm grateful for everything. Yeah, so finally I got admitted to study law and by the time I got into school, I came into school with the second list of admission that came out even though I had met up with the cut off mark, but I didn't come in with the merit list. Funny enough, you know how the devil attacks your heart? I I I battled with ingratitude. By the time I got into school and saw persons that were in first list, I felt like they were better than me. And not just that, seeing persons that were my juniors in secondary school, now my colleagues in class, and the fact that some of them came in with the first list, um, it kind of gave me this sense of shame, like, you are not good enough, and that is why you waited this long and even had to come in with the second list. <laughs> Thinking about it now, that, that was so or reasonable of me because at the end of the day did it really matter it didn't matter but one thing that feeling that process led me to by the time i took it to god i i realized that i needed to become more grateful than i was at the time and also i took a decision that it's not going to matter if these persons are my juniors or if these persons came in with first list i'm going to make it count i'm going to make my stay in that investing count if i really claim to be the senior then i'm going to do what seniors do so yeah i resolved to excel in class the funny thing is that despite the fact that I decided to excel, I didn't exactly understand what excelling means, probably because of where I was coming from. Where I was coming from, what matters most is that you get admitted. That's such a big deal. Then after getting admitted, you graduate and go for NYSC with your mates. That was the big deal. It didn't matter what you came out with, what grade you came out with. So for me, the most important thing was go to school make sure you come out with your mates and in my case being that i studied law make sure you go to law school with your mates and make sure you go for nyc with your mates that is the proof of success for my environment at the time 
so getting into first year in my head i'm like okay so to pass a course you just need like 50. so that's a scene in nigerian universities so i was like oh what's there to get a 50. mind you i've never really been that kid that has struggled academically all my life i've always kind of had it easy sometimes i don't even have to read and i still pass once i attend classes and you know pick up one or two things i'm good to go and that means before then i had never really failed an exam but in this case, by the time I was in second year, I saw my first year results and I realized I had failed the course. My mood went down the drain. I didn't know what it was. It was a new experience, a foreign experience. I had never failed an exam before. So what happened? What went wrong? And to think that I was particularly serious with that course, I didn't know what happened. I couldn't explain it. I was shut down for at least 72 hours. My roommates were scared because me being the most active roommate in the room, automatically growing quiet on them, they were worried. I was so down that I struggled to breathe. It was really serious. So after the first day, I called my mother and I was like, mommy, look at what happened because I didn't even know what else to do with my life. She told me, don't worry, focus on the exams you're writing, focus on the courses ahead. After that call, those are the words I held on to throughout the period I was in anguish because of that failure. There were times that it would seem that the word was expiring and I would just have to do one thing, pick up the phone and call my mother and I would just be fine. So guys, we are here now. Everyone say hi. Hi. So this is what here looks like. Omo. <laughs> this place is making me tell Siri to play. I have seen the Lord's goodness. His mercies and compassion. So, so nice. I like the light situation going on here. Um, I'll show you guys inside as much as I can. One of the most humbling posts I've ever read on social media is one where the author was like, your parents have lived in this world without you, but you've never lived in this world without them. Isn't it also amazing that God would attach a blessing as serious as long life to honor your parents? Because the Bible says it in Ephesians, honor your father and mother that your days may be long on earth. If we are to take that scripture literally, the opposite would be dishonor your father and mother that your days will be short on earth. The funny thing is that a lot of us do the later. We even begin to compare our parents with other parents. I remember some years ago when a Nigerian billionaire got Ferrari cars for three of his daughters and Nigerian children went haywire. A lot of persons began to ask where their parents were when OT dollar was acquiring the wealth that um, granted him the ability to buy Ferrari cars for three of his daughters. While that might be a joke on the side of some, I believe it was serious on the side of many. A lot of times we hold our parents and judge them so harshly for their deficiencies, forgetting that we too as children have our own deficiencies. My eyes were opened to this during my call to bar ceremony. There are lots of children who won awards and a lot more that did not win awards. But it didn't deter the joy of the parents of children that didn't win awards. They still embraced their children. They could have been prouder. Yeah, they could have been prouder if they had won awards. But they just embraced them. So if your parents embrace you whether you win awards or not, why don't you embrace them whether they get you a Ferrari car like Otedala or not? So you see, at the end of the day, we are all humans and that means we are all susceptible to errors, mistakes and failures. And that also means that the way you understand that you are susceptible to those, you should also cut people's slacks while judging them. I know some of our parents aren't exactly um, what you would say the ideal parents, but we should also understand that we too are not necessarily the ideal children, and that should um, that should guide us while judging them. That's if we should judge them. So, based on this discourse, I'm going to leave my final words and it is that if you have your parents alive, it might be that you have one parent alive in my case or you have both parents alive, I would say you should try as much as possible to honor them. Let there be a percentage of your income that is dedicated to your parents. Let it be that 
um if your parents have a need and is within your power to meet that need make sure you do because at the end of the day it's it's beyond just giving back to your parents it is you honoring your parents and it is you guaranteeing that you'd have a long life i would also say this if you don't have yet then try to honor them also there are different ways of honoring someone it must not be monetary and even if you have money and you give them money it does not stop with that also learn to honor them of course some of them are not exactly ideal and you might think they do not deserve it but that's on them what is on you is to honor them so i'd advise you honor them and get what's in stock for you for doing so all right so yeah thank you for coming to my ted talk <laughs> now i would love i would love you to watch till the end of this video do well to like subscribe and share all right tom ford amani oh god i beg i will never be poor in this life oh, can you see? black daddy <laughs> or bbb <BBVL>, or guy <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But this is Michael Cos. Can your birthday ever? Put it down. Mommy, unbox when we get home, Abby. Yeah.